I thought for this video to change the topic of conversation a little, as whilst I have a few interesting thoughts to give, this video needs a little bit more detail on how I'm going to create the parallax scrolling effect in Dulux Paint. So I felt a lighter touch topic in between that was a better bet really. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about of what I think is the best Amiga for enjoying Dulux Paint, tracker music and gaming for 2022. So first, Parallax. What is it? Well, you'll frequently see it in games, animation, indeed in the world around us. When we're moving, you can see Parallax, where the most distant objects appear to move slower in relation to the objects that are closest to you. In the case of the objects I drew last time, a night sky, two sets of skyscrapers and a streetlight, imagine that you're sat in a car as sucky as here. Out of the window on the expressway, the streetlights would seemingly move the fastest past you as they are closest, followed by the foreground skyscrapers and then the slowest moving object which will happen to be the night sky. I have put the specific size dimensions and parameters that I've used for this piece of pixel art animation on Patreon, but I'll outline the overall details in this video. To create this effect, I have the green screen I created last time. By using a Dulux Paint stencil and the Move Requester, I can create a parallax effect. The stencil I'll create will only allow painting on the green colour, so when I stamp the brush down, it will only affect that area. This way, it makes it easier to visualise the scrolling without having to crop out areas of the brush that's been pasted down as we move the background. As for the night sky and foreground skyscrapers, these are designed to scroll infinitely, so we need to make sure that the object moves from right to left, and then we chase it with the same background so that it can give that effect of scrolling past infinitely. The night sky will move left by one pixel per animation frame, which will look nice and smooth at 24 frames per second. This can be easily achieved with the Move Requester. By using this in combination with the stencil, it is possible to scroll the entire night sky past the green screen. To create the loop, I go to the middle of the animation where the entirety of the night sky is in view, and advance just one frame and stamp down the first leftmost one pixel of vertical pixels of the night sky on the right edge of the green screen area which is showing, and run the same move request. This has the effect of chasing the original move request and creates the infinite loop. Once this is complete, I can pick up the whole night sky scrolling by as an anim brush by holding down the left Amiga key as I drag the brush selector tool around the whole night sky. I save out this as an anim brush ready for use later. The steps for the rear skyscrapers are almost the same. Again I revert to the simple green screen and paint these scrolling by by using the move requester. The major difference here is that these will scroll left to right faster than the night sky, in fact twice the speed. Because the rear skyscrapers aren't designed to scroll infinitely across the whole 360 frames of animation, multiple rear skyscrapers have to be stamped down and moved across the scene. If you keep the overall brush width to the same width for the green screen, you'll get smoother animation because the X distance of the movement, which is double the width of the green screen, and will mean that you have a smooth animation value, so the speed can be set with the count value. So, on to the topic of which Amiga do I think is best for you in 2021, or indeed 2022, for the three things that I mentioned, gaming, tracker music, and of course, pixel art. Honestly, I only have two real suggestions, possibly on the outside, three choices. The first is emulation. Don't switch off. I do actually think that this needs a bit of consideration. Overall, it's more compact and much more convenient. If, like me, you lack the space and perhaps you want to move around files frequently from your local machine to the Amiga side of things, emulation just makes this so much more simple. There is also a great expense to having the real hardware these days, so it may be worth considering if it's really that important to have the real deal. I use emulation here in Japan and I can have everything from the most basic Amiga right up to a nice souped up machine even on my aging 2012 MacBook Air. If however having the real hardware is important to you, I only really have one real suggestion, the Amiga 600. The reason being is compared to an Amiga 500, it's easier to move files from an Amiga to another system through the PCM CIA slot that the Amiga 500 lacks. Another reason is that it's very easy and cheap to upgrade to 2MB of chip RAM. 
This is important for the Amiga. Think of it as a space where graphics, animations and sound effects are stored for viewing or playback. On an Amiga 500, it can be done, but it's more hassle. And sure, an Amiga 500 Plus can easily take 2 megabytes of chip RAM, but so many are dead and in need of extensive repairs due to leaking battery on their motherboards that have corroded many of the traces and other parts of the system. Another benefit of the Amiga 600 is that it's easy to add mass storage. A simple IDE to SD or compact flash adapter and a cheap card will act as a nice, decently sized hard disk. Last, the small size and built-in colour composite output does have its appeal as well. I'll talk about the drawbacks of the Amiga 600 and real hardware in general shortly. All of what I'm doing here can be done on the Amiga 600 in terms of the colour palette, so that's why I'm suggesting it. Back to the artwork. The foreground skyscrapers work much like the night sky. The left and right of the skyscraper is designed to match up, so creating an infinite scroll. This time, the foreground skyscrapers are designed to speed past at four times the speed of the night sky. Last, the street lights are created to scroll by. Like the rear skyscrapers, these don't have matching left and right parts, so again they need to be pasted down multiple times across the duration of the animation, using the same principles as the rear skyscrapers. All four parallax layers are now saved as anim brushes, which can be now layered up on top of the green screen, starting with the rearmost object, the night sky. Again, using the Move Requester, all 360 frames of each anim brush can then be pasted down without having to click the mouse 360 times. The trick is to use the Move Requester and make sure that X, Y and Z parameters, or Z parameters if you prefer, are all set to zero and that the count is set to 360 in my case. Back to the best Amiga for pixel art. There are downsides in Amiga 600 and real hardware in general. First is the colour palette limitations. The Amiga 600, like most Amigas released up until the end of 1992, can only display up to 32 colours on a low resolution screen. There is a 4096 colour mode called HAM, but it's a bit more involved to work with and definitely slow on a stock Amiga. If you want more colours, you're going to have to look at an Amiga 1200, 4000 or CD32, or perhaps an upgrade like the Vampire for your Amiga. All of this comes at greater expense. This is why I tend to feel that like emulation is a good option these days. Or why not use something like A-Sprite on your modern machine if 256 colours or more than that is important? It really comes down to how important it is to have the real hardware. Only you can answer that. The second drawback of real hardware is that it needs maintenance. Floppy drives tend to not work these days, so you may need to replace it with a GoTech or have it repaired. And the Amiga 600, 1200, 4000, CZ32 all pretty much need to have their capacitors replaced. And whilst this is not overly expensive, it is something that needs to be factored in. That said, once you have replaced the capacitors, Amiga 600s and 1200s do tend to be quite reliable. One last small overlooked drawback is that most Amiga mice are pretty horrible to use if I'm honest, especially if you've been spoiled by modern mice and trackpads. Their low resolution and awkward ergonomics can make pixeling a bit of a pain. Thankfully, a modern replacement can be sourced for your real Amiga, but all of these things add up cost-wise. Some of the Amiga mice are not too bad, such as the Amiga 3000 so-called pregnant mouse, which is basically related to its shape, and the later Amiga Technologies mouse, which was a bit more curvy, has slightly better ergonomics and slightly better resolution. But overall, most Amiga mice are pretty terrible compared to your modern day optical mice. But for all of this, I think the best actual Amiga if you're set on real hardware for pixel art, playing games and using tracker software to create music right now is the Amiga 600. The last step for this part of the video is adding the background behind my character Saki Endo here. I cut the finished scrolling background as an anim brush again and saved it. Then I load the image of my character Saki and copy it across all 360 frames of the animation. Using the stencil again to only allow painting down on the green colour, I paste the first frame of the anim brush down, undo it and then activate the move requester and paste all 360 frames of animation of the scrolling background down. Again this is done by making sure that the X, Y, Z, Z uh, parameters are all set to zero and the count is set to 360 in my case. And here is the result of all this, both with Saki and the car present and without with just the background. 
It's super effective, I'm sure you'll agree. You could add more layers of parallax if you wanted. You could add more details into the existing layers of parallax. It's all down to your taste. And indeed, of course, you could make the actual scrolling area even bigger. But just bear in mind that the more of the screen that you're shifting, the more memory that it will require. And indeed, you might need a faster Amiga to actually shift that amount of pixels. So maybe full screen might be asking a little bit more, too much from Dulux Paint Animation using this method on a basic 68,000 Amiga like the A600. But for smaller areas like this, using D-Paint to create parallax is definitely possible. The next step will be to refine this animation and make Saki's hair flutter a little with the air rushing by in through the window and maybe a few tweaks with the colour shading as the animation frames progress. But that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. The actual measurements as I say and sizes are on Patreon if you want to consider my supporting my artwork that I do through that method. Anyway, that's all for now and I guess it all remains for me to say as always is see you soon. Peace!